FDNY will fly drones over Rockaway Beach in Queens, Coney Island in Brooklyn, Orchard Beach in the Bronx. If sharks are spotted, the beach may close for that day. The increased eyes on the shore will hopefully prevent any other attacks or close encounters. So there's a lot to talk about. For more on the FDNY's efforts, I'm joined now here in studio by FDNY Commissioner Laura Kavanaugh. So good to have you here, Commissioner. Thanks for having me. Okay, so you guys are very busy now <laughs> with yes. the fires going on, number one thing, right? Then you had a crane collapse. Now we're going to add sharks to it as yes. well. So you have these new drone patrols going over the beaches. Tell us a little bit how that's going to work and how frequently you're going to do it. So, uh, one, thank you for pointing out, you know, our life-saving mission is pretty expansive, right? Yeah. So it covers everything, and it covers the beach, too. Um, you know, every summer we have resources all over the beach helping to make sure New Yorkers are mm -hmm. safe on the beach, and we've now added monitoring for sharks yep. to that mission. Um, so we're going to have not only our drones looking for sharks, we're also going to have our marine units, our boats out in the water, and then our existing units that are on the beach, EMS, and yeah. our water rescue units will be available that way if someone is injured, they can get help right so, away. So it's a pretty comprehensive effort, yeah. and we're doing it with our agency partners, as you right. mentioned. Right, because you, you see things from the from the shoreline and in the water, but high above is a whole different vantage point because exactly. you can kind of see where things are playing out. Yeah. How frequently is that actually going to be done? So that's going to be every day. We'll be monitoring before the beaches open. Um, if a shark is spotted, we'll make a decision whether or not to delay or close the beaches that day along with you know the rest of our agency partners. And then we'll be monitoring all throughout the day uh, through swimming hours and a little bit afterwards. Okay. So the drones use this like special technology, right? That, tell us a little bit more about it because it's not just the bird's eye view, but it's mm -hmm. doing more than that. So kind of walk us through it in a way yeah. that maybe we'll understand. Yeah. I mean, the, the unit is pretty incredible. Um, they can n use not only a number of different drones so they can get closer, they can get further away. Some of mm -hmm. them have an you know, incredibly clear view. Um, and so we'll, we'll use a complement of those uh, items, you know, whether it's a smaller one that can get closer, a bigger one yeah. to get a more expansive view um, to make sure we're getting the full picture of the ocean. So shark is spotted, beach closes down for the day. So it depends. Um, at least for an hour is the, okay. the standard, the common standard that's used. And then you monitor, you know, mm -hmm. so does the shark swim away, where are they going, or is there more than one? You have to make a call based on sort of where it is and where it's right. located, but it's at least an hour um, potentially for the day if there's, you know, more to it. Yeah. Now, I read the list of beaches that is going to happen over. Mm -hmm. Staten Island not on the list. Is it not a concern it, over there? Or? It will be. Okay. And we're going to add Staten Island as okay, well. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, so EMS, you talked about them as well, because they yeah. really jumped right into action, specifically yes. with that woman that was bit. They applied the tourniquet and so on and so forth. really saved her life. Um, Do they have to go specialized training for shark bites? So not for shark bites, um, but, you know, what they did there, which is stopping, you know, bleeding is one of their, yeah. you know, core missions, something that they do have to do a lot in other situations. And mm -hmm. so that's why you saw them go to such quick work. And I think it's worth pointing out that that was perfect, you know, team effort, right? The lifeguards got the woman out of the water right away. Um, NYPD was on scene to assist with mm -hmm. the transfer. And we were there to help assist, you know, getting her yeah. treatment right away. And I, and I think that that is a big part of why she is stable at yeah. this time. So shark bites are obviously very rare, Extremely. but shark sightings are just more frequent. It's the new reality. It's the mm -hmm. new norm. We see them more and more. So how are you kind of factoring that in to, I guess, the budget here, right? Because mm -hmm. this is not, it's going to cost money to fly these drones, mm -hmm. put the boats in. Is it now going to be a every summer kind of thing? I think, you know, we need to do a little bit more to figure out, as you mentioned, the, the beach is changing a little bit, and mm -hmm. actually it's a good sign. It means that our waterways are getting healthier. Yeah. Um, there's more fish. Where there are more fish, there are more uh, sharks. So, you know, we are talking to experts from, you know, local areas, the aquarium, um, some of our local universities, and we'll probably make a decision, you know, in the off-season about what we'll do in the future, but it does seem to be that, you know, some part of monitoring will probably be part yeah. of our, our future mission. Yeah, I mean, it's a great time. We, sp we spoke to an expert who talked to marine biologists talked about just the cleaner waters yeah. is what's bringing everything closer to shore, right? Yeah. Which is a great sign because it means things are, 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 are cleaner out there. Yeah. But when you take a look at the totality of the rest of this summer, mm -hmm. that will be an everyday thing, right? The drone. It will be an everyday thing. When we have people in the water, when they're, the beaches are open, we will be monitoring for sharks. It's just um, next summer that may be. Yeah, I think we'll just need to decide what we're doing for next summer. They'll probably be part of that, but we'll make an assessment in the okay. off season about what's needed. I'd also just point out, you know, those, those assets also help for so many other things, mm -hmm. including the number one concern we always have about the beaches in the summer is, is swimmers and drowning, mm -hmm. right? So those assets can also help look for people who are in distress. So it's really, you know, it's definitely going to be for watching out for sharks mm -hmm. you know, now that we've had this attack. It's also part of just the bigger mission yeah. of making sure people are safe in the water. You know, beaches are, are dangerous. The ocean is dangerous, and we want to make sure we have as many assets as possible yeah, out there. And sorry, are you supplementing some of the lifeguard shortages? 
Um, we are not, um, we're not doing lifeguarding, but we do have a lot of extra assets on the beach. And so okay. we are able to go to work quickly. Um, you know, we do monitor parts of the beaches where there aren't lifeguards. And so we, again, we can yeah. make sure that if we see someone in distress, especially in an area where mm -hmm. there isn't a lifeguard, that we can let them know okay. right away. Fire Commissioner Lauren Cam, FDNY mm -hmm. Commissioner, good to have you here. Yeah. First time I think I've interviewed you where we actually did not talk about fires. <laughs> All right, good to have you here on Picks and Politics. Thanks.